Call these numbers. Your call is anonymous, and it is vitally important. Your support so far has been critical. Continuing it will make... International News. President Mohamed Buhari meets members of Nigeria Governors Forum, expresses concern over unpaid salaries despite bailouts by the federal government. Federal government to take advantage of Culture and Tourism Royal Committee to study a fiscal restructuring plan for the this Thursday. Guests attribute the development to mismanagement and misplaced priorities by those states worst hit by salary burden. Joy Ozo reports. According to the Nigerian Labour Congress, only 13 out of the 36 states in Nigeria are up to date with the payment of their workers. President of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Comrade Ayuba Waba, who highlighted some factors that may be responsible, said despite the daunting challenges, payment of workers' salaries should be made a priority as it constitutes an important component of government and society. Outside the issue of some states being indebted because of overborrowing, uh, the issue of uh, governors serving out, paying themselves very bogus severance package, and the issue of monumental corruption. I think the major issues also that have to do with the revenue accruing to the state, of which states need to work on their internal general revenue. On the claim of ongoing verification exercise in some states to weed out ghost workers, which several states use as an excuse for the delay in the payment of salaries, some of the guests said that it is taking too long. And uh, it doesn't matter how long it takes, but we have committed to saying that by April this will end, once we have gotten every civil servant or public servant to give a BVN number that will help us do a final data mining. You will always hear that ghost workers have been found, but you will not hear how much has been uh, recovered from them. How many of them have been penalized? How many of them are in prison? With most states defaulting with the current minimum wage of 18,000 Naira, Guest described the 56,000 Naira new minimum wage being proposed by the Nigeria Labour Congress as not feasible. However, the NLC boss insists that it is justifiable based on inflation and reduction in the purchasing power of the Naira. In Abuja, Joy Uzo, NTA News. President Muhammad Buhari says his administration has confidence in the culture and tourism sector as an avenue to positively engage a huge segment of the nation's citizenry in growing the economy. President Muhammad Buhari stated this in a message to the opening of the 2016 National Summit on Culture and Tourism in Abuja. Anthony Forson reports. Since assumption of office, the present administration's resolve to diversify the economy and make it less dependent on oil, culture and tourism has been a sector whose potentials came under spotlight, which has culminated into this summit. President Muhammad Buhari, who was represented by the Minister of Trade, Industry and Investment, said he is determined to remove Nigeria from a mono-economic nation. One of the most remarkable traits of development since the middle of the 20th century has been the mobilization of culture and tourism as a preferred form of economic development at local, regional, and national levels. The sector President Muhammad Buhari also noted is a unifier and a platform upon which unity can be cemented. Tourism also has the capacity to assist the world inhabitants to live better together and thereby contribute to peaceful coexistence between peoples and cultures. To the private sector, President Muhammad Buhari enjoined them to key into government's resolve to boost the sector by investing passionately to achieve a positive change. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed said Nigeria is partnering with global bodies in the sector to ensure that all key components that make up for the sector are not left out. Which is to, in practical terms, move away from failing service to these sectors in order to harness their potentials. We are happy to announce that there has been a major boost to our efforts to develop tourism in Nigeria. There were good messages from the United Nations World Tourism Organization and British Council. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NT News. 
Similarly, Chinese ambassador to Nigeria, Gu Ziaje, has expressed China's readiness to promote China-Nigeria cultural and economic strategic partnership. Mr. Gu Ziaje said this in Abuja at a movie premiere on the development of Tibet Autonomous Region in China. Correspondent Obege Liu Guoke has the story. Outlining the significant development recorded in Tibet Autonomous Region of China, Mr. Gu Jie said the contributions of a country like Nigeria towards Tibet's development cannot be ignored, adding that both countries have gained fruitful achievements from friendly cooperation in all fields. And the leaders of both countries exchange views on bilateral relations, and indeed it opened up a new chapter of win-win cooperation and common development for both countries. The fate of Tibet's unique national, cultural and religious identity was formally threatened and manipulated by Chinese policies. But today, under the system of regional ethnic autonomy, Tibetans have recorded rapid economic and social growth. And there was no modern industry in old Tibet, but after more than 60 years of development. Tibet has a modern industrial system. China aims to complete several major rail routes by the year 2020, connecting Tibet with its neighboring provinces of Xinjiang, Xinkohan, and Yunnan. Obiage Liu Gwoke, NTA News. To the National Assembly now. The House of Representatives is to investigate public funds and assets recovered from 1999 till date to ensure they are not misappropriated. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Sonko has more on this and other resolutions. For many years, past administrations have recovered looted funds from different parts of the world. But unfortunately, some of these funds are perceived not to have been accounted for properly. That is why the House in a motion moved by Representative Shegun Adekola from Ekiti State, resolved to mandate its Committee on Financial Crimes to investigate the state of these funds. Made by what the Honorable Minister of Justice said, that over two trillion has been recovered. What have Nigerians been benefiting from this recovered loot? The House also resolved to intervene in the 21-day warning strike issued by resident doctors, which expires this week, as moved by Representative Kingsley Chinda from River State. The motion is referred to the Committee on Held Institutions to continue further engagement. The motion moved by Representative Goodluck Nana Opia from Imo State urged the DSS to release the president of the Nigerian Youth Council, Ugo Chiyana Ikenga, who he said was unlawfully arrested, was adopted. The speaker, he has been arrested for many days without a bail or trial. Another motion adopted was that by Representative Damboram Abubakar from Kano State, urging the federal government to commiserate with and provide adequate compensation for victims of the recent fire outbreak at the Kurumi Market, Kano. A bill for an act to repeal the National Agricultural Seeds Act of 2004, which was reenacted as the National Agricultural Seed Council 2006, sponsored by Representative Munir Agundi from Kano State, passed for second reading. In agriculture, before you do anything, seeds is the most important input. If you solve the issue of seeds in terms of quality, then you are solving 50% of the problem. The National Agricultural Seed Council is not autonomous in nature. It is subjected to the whims and caprices of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. It is not autonomous. Meanwhile, Representative Baba Farouk from Niger State has tendered apology to members for the interview he granted to BBC Hausa Language Channel, where he said he was misquoted as saying that all members received 100 million naira each from the federal government for constituency development. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTNU. Muhammad Buhari has reaffirmed her commitment to remain steadfast in addressing the health challenges of women and children in Nigeria. Mrs. Buhari stated this as the official flag of a free health screening courtesy of her Future Assured initiative. State House correspondent Aliu Kabir reports. 
The Future Assured Initiative of the wife of the president is aimed at improving the health status of women, youth, and children in Nigeria. The program in Ibadan targeted at 2,500 women. The focus was on blood pressure checks, blood sugar checks, breast examination, and cervical cancer screening, as well as malaria tests. While urging all stakeholders to come on board in achieving the goals of the Future Assured program, the wife of the president, who was accompanied by some of the wives of the governors and other dignitaries, said, The initiative is part of our efforts at complementing government decision in providing health care services to the citizens of the country. This exercise, this exercise is also intended to raise awareness on the importance of regular medical, medical checks. checks. This, this initiative will contribute to a term of the sustainable development goal, SDGs 3, in particular, which is about ensuring healthy life and promoting the well-being of all. The idea of the exercise, the wife of the president explained, is to encourage women to come out for screening for early detection and to engage on self-examination, which she said will go a long way in reducing the dangers of the diseases. Let me at this point call on the entire citizens of this country to be proactive in seeking medical attention by going to health facilities for regular medical checkups. The Oyo State Governor, Abiola Ajimobi, promised the wife of the President of his continued support in achieving the objectives of the exercise. It will benefit millions and millions of people in Oyo State as well as in Nigeria in general. The wife of the governor assured the wife of the president of her readiness to take the program to all the local government areas for the benefit of the people. Every April 28th is marked as World Day for Safety and Health at Work. The annual event seeks to address work-related accidents, diseases and death. A situation stakeholders in labor circles say must be prevented. Labor correspondent Emmanuel Animiro reports that this, is, that this year's focus is workplace stress, a collective challenge. Loss of human life is the ultimate cause of work-related accidents and diseases. This lamentation and many more are what many workers are subjected to due to the conditions and demands of modern working life. A United Nations report estimates that over 2 million men and women lose their lives through accidents and diseases yearly due to work-related stress. How to safeguard and not to endanger workers' health is the take-home from this awareness program. Employers should assess the workplace for the, risk, for, for the risk of stress, for its effective management and control. Securing safe workplaces extends beyond the protections of workers' physical safety to their mental and psychological well-being. We must know what constitutes a safe workplace. And then there has to be education, both uh, in terms of public awareness and also at factory levels. Stress management is very, very important as far as productivity improvement effort is concerned. Risk assessment were conducted for participants through medical checks to determine their health status and work stress, with results showing alarming high blood pressure and work stress. In Abuja, Emmanuel Ahimiro, NT News. And the federal government has declared Monday, 2nd May 2016, as public holiday to commemorate the 2016 Workers' Day celebration. Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Abdurrahman Belu Dambazal, who made the declaration on behalf of the federal government of Nigeria, congratulated Nigerian workers for their resilience, hard work, and commitment to the change mantra of the president. He enjoined them to continue to support the president in his desire to fight corruption, ensure security of lives and property, and stabilize the economy through creation of jobs and diversification of the economy. General Dan Bazal further urged Nigerian workers to rededicate themselves to the service of the nation and remain productive for the growth and development of the country. You are watching the news on NCA International. More news after the break. Stay with us. If you hear a bomb explosion or gunshots of an active shooter, that might be a terror attack. At such times, always remember three action words. Run, hide, report. 
Don't try to run towards the Terracene to save the situation, because there might be a second bomb blast or another attack. Run far away and take cover. Make sure you are safe first. Yes, it is in our nature to sympathize over the hurt, but remember, only trained personnel can help in such situations. When in a secured environment, promptly call relevant authorities and help will come. For anonymous reporting, call 09630-3250 to 5 or 0813-2222-106. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. A book, The Foundation for Financial Accounting, written by Udo Ubo, has identified adherence to high-quality professional standards in finance as a panacea for solving Nigeria's economic challenges and those of other African countries. This was at the public presentation of the book in Abuja. Muplank Dakok reports. The 158-page book, which is made up of nine chapters and divided into five parts, focuses on identifying, classifying, and analyzing financial accounts. The book reviewer Uche Waleke said, the thorough theoretical and practical illustrations of the book are viable tools for avoiding fraud and ensuring transparency in accounting. Another unique feature of the book is the rich material included in chapter five, dealing with due process policy on funds disbursements extracted from the Manual on Public Procurement Reform Program of the Federal Government of Nigeria. Accounting has a special play. And so when people, anybody is bringing anything, emphasizing things concerning accountability, it runs a symmetry on the expectations of the government. Author of the book, Udo Ubo, said adaptation of principles of the book will give an overall understanding of accounting system. One can use receipts, bills, profile invoice, and all other documents that appear to be neglected by organizations. The book has been recommended for students, practitioners of the accounting profession, and those in the micro, small, and medium enterprises. In Abuja, Muplang Dakok, NTN News. And for news and business, let's join Ede Awo. Portfolio investment transactions in equity decreased from 36.48% to 35.76%. Mostly foreign outflows outpaced the inflows. Foreign outflows decreased by 40.20% from 31.84 billion Naira in February 2016 to 19.04 billion Naira in March. While foreign inflows increased by 40.77% from 10.94 billion Naira in February to 15.40 billion naira in March. Meanwhile, the Federation of Agricultural Commodity of Nigeria has called for the review of the forex policy in Nigeria to boost export of agricultural produce. And they must sell to the bank at 199. What is the international price of cocoa today? It's about 2008, 2009. Multiply that by 199. It will give you about 570,000. Why you are buying goods for 850,000? Where is it done? Let's run a quick check on what transpired Thursday on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange and prices of some commodities. <music> Stay tuned for the rest of the news. I am Ede Awo. Over now to Fatima Aliu for stories trending around the globe. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has criticized increasing restrictive policies on migrants in Europe, saying such control ran counter to member countries' international duties. 
He was speaking a day after Austria MPLs approved a draft law restricting asylum rights and allowing most claims to be rejected at the border. More than a million people arrived Europe last year, sparking the worst refugee crisis on the continent since World War II and creating division in the EU over how to deal with it. And police in Nairobi, Kenya, are holding a student who was found cultivating marijuana on the roof of his family house. Reports indicate that the boy has been growing the illegal crop for a couple of years without the knowledge of his parents. Police uprooted over 100 stacks of the crop from a container on the roof of the house in Makugini area. Meanwhile, hundreds of mourners have welcomed the body of Papa Wemba, one of the Africans best known singers, back to the Democratic Republic of Congo. It was flown into the capital, Kinshasa, from the Ivory Coast, where he died on Sunday after collapsing on stage in Abidjan at the age of 66. Papa Wemba will be buried Tuesday after lying in state in Kinshasa on Monday. Fatima Ali, NTA News. In sports, Ministerial Sports Reform Committee steps to implement policies for development. As Super Eagles coach Salisu Yusuf invites 26 players for Mali and Luxembourg friendly, Kenya Imabo Dike brings us details. Chairman of the Ministerial Sports Reform Committee, Godwin Kienka, has restated the determination of the committee towards implementing ideas and policies capable of eradicating the factors militating against development of the sector in the country. Kienka was speaking in Abuja Thursday at the committee's media party, which was the second in the series after the Lagos vision last week. We will have to adopt a simple and sensible approach that makes our recommendations um, implementable and I'm, I'm sure by God's grace that uh, um, we'll come up with something that is too good to resist. Super Eagles head coach Salisu Yusuf has called up 26 players including skipper John Mikelobi, forwards Ahmed Musa and Ojeni Gallo and goalkeeper Kali Keme for the forthcoming international friendlies against Mali and Luxembourg come May 27 and June 1 in Europe. Defenders Kenneth Meru, Leon Balogu, and William Trust Echo return, while Ogenyo Onazi, Elderson Echejile, Victor Moses, Alex Iwobi, and Aaron Samuel are back to family. This is where the prospects in Nigeria and some world cities. Where the prospect wraps it up on the news. Thank you for watching, but do stay tuned for our other programs. I am Mwadi Elubiki.